Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Tiffany Herbert, founder and executive director of Crafting Change. I want to welcome everyone to our Zoom room tonight. Tonight is a sip and sew with our um, sewing advisor, uh, Kathy Lawrence, who is here tonight to talk about fiddle mats. And we're super excited about this project. I have the one that Kathy sent me. Uh, as a sample to see, and I'm super excited. I've been fiddling with it all day as I was sewing bags in my sewing room, and it's very distracting. Um, and <laughs> I recently met with um, the volunteer coordinator over at one of our charity partners who's requesting these right now. She said on a recent trip to visit one of the hospice patients um, who was fiddling and picking uh, at one of their um, uh, wounds, she's very excited to receive our twiddle muffs and fiddle mats because she knows it's going to be of great help to their patients who are always twiddling and fiddling and picking. So they're very excited about this project. So I'm going to turn it over to Kathy and let her talk about what we're doing. And I want to just first off, just thank Kathy. This has been a real labor of love for you. So much research and work went into this project. Um, and so I, I just, I, I want to just first off, let everybody know this took a lot of time and a lot of, a, a lot of work for you. And I just want to just thank you for that. Uh, because this wasn't just a go on the internet and look up a pattern and make it. This was a starting from scratch thing that Kathy put together for us. Um, because we actually have been wanting to do uh, uh, one of these since Crafting Change was founded over a year ago, and it's taken us this long to get an acceptable pattern um, that that we felt good and comfortable putting out into the world because it is, there's so much science behind it, because this is something going into medical facilities and working with patients, and so it was really that important that we did it right, and we feel great about this, so I want to thank Kathy for that, so thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. My turn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like that fiddle and twiddle. That's like <laughs> Humpty Dumpty, right? Oh, uh, but this is our fiddle mat project. And like Tiffany said, I'm very excited that it's come to fruition and we haven't just thrown things together that look cute and pretty. There's actually a lot of research that went into this. So I'm sure you've all seen what they are. And now I'm going to show you what we've come up with as a real good, reasonable uh, way to make these and to put your science and creativity together. Now, you might know one of the ways that individuals that have Alzheimer's or dementia or aging, one of the ways that they show anxiety or agitation is in their hands. They begin to fidget obsessively, relentlessly pulling and picking at their clothes or wringing their hands or, or rubbing. Uh, my, bless her heart, my mother-in-law lived to be 100. And during her later years, she began to do this rubbing underneath her eye repeatedly, day after day after day. And it got to be so bad that her eyelid became droopy and we were almost at the point of, of having to do surgery for her. So you can imagine that if you do anything repeatedly day after day, you can wear through your clothes or hurt yourself in other ways that you're not aware of. So fiddle mats are popular to help combat anxiety, agitation, and even boredom. And now I need to clarify here that there could be many different groups that we would be making these for. Uh, children, elderly, ADD, dementia, Alzheimer's, anxiety disorders, PTSD, hospice. There's a lot of people that would benefit from them. And each of these groups have a slightly different approach that we have to be cognizant of. So try to get a good feel for whom you're making your mat for before you start planning. An example, um, if you're making them for, for kids in a kid's setting, they can have different themes to theirs than the aged. People with arthritis or mobility issues, they need larger sized objects so they can grab and manipulate them. And some people just might get frustrated and not realize what they're doing and just throw their mats. So avoid using large metal objects or anything that could hurt someone if they were accidentally hit. Now I know there's a great temptation to put what you like or think is cute on a mat, but you really need to keep in mind who the mat's being made for. It'll be a, a much better project. So that's one thing in mind when I was trying to design the mat is to make it flexible enough for us to change it up according to whom we are making them for and what the partner charities might be requesting. 
So if we have any specific requirements from a partner charity, they will be listed on their project page. So look there before you start. And the project page will also state who we're making these for so you can kind of zoom in on their mindset and make one that's appropriate. So the mat that I've settled on finally after lots of prototypes was meant to lay on a person's lap or on a table. It's basically a rectangle about 18 by 22. So you can cut four of the tops out of a yard of material. We are recommending to use about six to nine little features in placed in an orderly fashion on the mat. My sample blocks are done on six inch squares. If you've got a little quilting six inch ruler, that's great for cutting them out. Now you can use larger blocks if you like but please don't go any smaller because it makes the whole feature just too small. Um, if you use larger ones, go plan it accordingly so it still has a sense of balance and order to it. Um, the idea of a fiddle is to have different textures to feel, things to open, things to slide or play, to help soothe the person and help to restore calm to them. Uh, the mats are designed to help focus attention exercise hand muscles and entertain. So please resist the temptation to make it a hot mess. And I know you've probably all seen some that are just like, whoa, what am I supposed to be looking at? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, so I'm suggesting constructing most of your squares on a separate square of material and then sew that onto the mat, finishing it with some kind of a defining border. That way, if you make a mistake, you won't ruin the whole mat. And the separate square is also easier to work with as it's smaller to handle and you can access the back if you need to secure an item. Now, a word about colors. Uh, the color red participation, it promotes participation, it stimulates appetite, and green and blue promote relaxation. Yeah, they've studied this, this is true. Pink reduces aggressive behavior. Orange and fuchsia are easier to see when your vision dims. So try to incorporate these into your mat. On the older, uh, older people, bright colors are very important for the older eyes. With decreased acuity, pastels tend to blend together and don't provide enough contrast so they won't know what they're looking at. So try to stick with the bright part of the color wheel and ensure that you have higher contrast so it can be easily seen by older eyes. Uh, giving Somebody, a mat with all pastels would be like giving them something that's all black. They just wouldn't be able to see it. So for your older um, older people that we're doing these for, please remember brighter colors with contrast. Also, users with vision problems will find it harder to focus on mats with lots of white or shiny. And don't use anything reflective. Avoid using mirrors if somebody has Alzheimer's or, or dementia and, and they might not recognize themselves and seeing a stranger staring back at them can be alarming. Um, one last word about washability. We have to be flexible regarding the settings that these will be used in. If they are in an institutional setting such as the nursing home, then we might we need to be mindful that the washing will be harsh and plan our mats accordingly. Um, the current partner charity is a hospice, so we are assuming that just one person will be using the same mat and the family would be gently laundered. Um, now, so when you send your mat in, if there's any special washing requirements, which I hope you don't, anything more than just a, a hand wash, write that on your paper so they'll know um, what to do with it. So everything needs to be washable whether it's a hand wash or a machine wash. Now, creating a mat is one part art, one part science. And keeping with the motto of first do no harm, uh, Crafting Change has developed this project using science-based research to match with our creativity. And I think we all really enjoy the creativity part. And I think it's easier to explain what I mean by showing you our feature score library and going over how they were made and the reasoning behind them. So not every feature on a fiddle mat has to be busy. Uh, the items in our library are going to be noted as one of three categories. Functional, which means they can be manipulated, grabbed, 
hold or handle. Sensory, which provides tactile input and stimulates the sense of touch. And auditory, which is stimulating somebody with sound. So please use features from all three of these categories in your mat. And some features will fall into more than one category. So just a note, as I show these uh, feature squares, each one has been assigned a number and you will be able to look them up by number on our feature score library. So if you wanted to make notes of which ones look like fun, I'll try to remember to read off the fiddle numbers. Now I'm gonna to switch to the other camera so I can better show you, better show you the squares. So, okay. And we're coming to the Kathy's iPad. Okay. All right. Now, one second, let me switch. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Now we're going to go through the series of scores that I've worked on and tell you the reasoning behind them. This is, we're starting with the functional group. And this is fiddle number one. It's a, called a, a functional fiddle. Boy, I say that three times fast, right? We've got hair scrunchies that are sewn down and then covered, the seam covered with some bias tape that a person can, can pull on and then a long scrunchie that's sewn down at the top and it's loose and a tab was added to make it easier to grab. Now both can be stretch and pull. Note the larger size of the scrunchie and the tab that makes it easier to grab. Now our next one is fiddle number five is the zippers. You already see a lot of zippers on, on a fiddle mat. Now you don't have to put two on here. I'm just showing you a couple different Different ways that you could incorporate a zipper. This way we have just a zipper just sewn on with a fancy stitch just directly onto the mat and the ends were covered with a little bit of fabric and just stitched around and this one was bound with fabric and sewn on but both of them have a big pull to make it easier for somebody to grab that little pole is just terrible to try to get your fingers on. So make sure you to add something like a tab of fabric or ribbons. Uh, and also make sure that your zipper glides easily. Now we've got number 19. That's a functional and auditory. My Velcro one. Velcro is so much fun. It really is it's fun because it's not it's functional. Somebody grabs it and they have to pull it, but also, oh, it makes such a great sound. That's a really satisfying sound. So this would be both functional and auditory. Now this top one was just a little dab. You can make a pocket and then put a flap on it with Velcro. If you do that, put the soft side on the flap that would touch a person's hands because older uh, people, their skin is, thinner and it's irritating to them. So we're trying to make it comfortable for them. And again, the Velcro, this was just sewn down on a piece of material and it gives it a high contrast here so you can see what it is. Then the other part was sewn onto a flap and just secured down onto the square. So that is number 19. And number 17 is a functional fiddle. It's a shirt fabric to represent a shirt and the shirt material is made with craft bond in the middle I'll show you that in a little bit and it's laid out in a peekaboo door fashion and so notice the buttons are larger so they're easier to handle if you get them too small it's you can't grab you can't get at them so uh, this will help maintain the familiar skills of buttoning a shirt and here's a little hint for you. I've done them with the buttonholes across and I've done them with them up and down. And I highly recommend 
doing them up and down. And that's what is shown in our fiddle uh, library. Uh, the, the crossways are a little bit harder to work. So if you're going to use this one, make your buttonholes go up and down and then make sure that everything works. Now these buttons are sewn down in two different points, so they should be secure. They're sewn on with machine and gone over quite a few times. But on some projects coming up, I'll show you how to connect them if they're only connected with one point. Now fiddle number four is uh, functional and auditory. This is a piece of webbing with a clasp. And the clasp is functional because the person has to manipulate it to get it undone. And then it makes a really nice click. So that is kind of an addicting click, just like that Velcro. Now the edges of the webbing were lightly uh, singed with a, a lighter to make sure they don't ravel. And then when this goes on to my mat, I'm going to sew it all around the outside and then outline it with some ribbon. So that's how all of these are put on. They're sewn down first and then outlined with some type of a ribbon to give them definition. Okay, fiddle number eight. Hey, a little pair of jeans. Now these are just the side of a pocket of jeans. They're sewn on with a waistband and the original uh, belt loops were taken off and these larger ones I added on to make it easy to manipulate the belt to go through. And the belt is just sewn down to it here on the side and so it's loose and it can come out and that is a functional of threading your belt through your belt loops which again, like a zipper or something that somebody's done a million times. Also, the little pocket is open so you can explore inside of it. And that is number eight. Another good function is lacing. Lacing helps maintain their familiar skills of lacing and tying. If you're going to do this, use larger grommets or big buttonholes or something that's easy for somebody to get something through. If you're using metal grommets, make sure that you check the backside that it's completely smooth and doesn't have anything that could cut or hurt a person's hands. Now, these are just uh, sweatshirt ties. I think I got a big bag of a zillion of them off of Amazon. These are sweatshirt ties. And at the top, to secure them, they're stitched down zigzagged here and then I put another piece of material on top of it to cover it so they're sewn down twice once underneath here and another with the material on top so those can be pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and they're not coming out so that's number 24 um, just a reminder fine motor skills deteriorate with age so think about the scale and difficulty of your activities like the button one, it would be frustrating to try to button with small buttons or lacing small eyelets with stiff hang fingers or grabbing at a small zipper pull. So in these functional fiddles, what is easy for an average person becomes so hard when you age and your motor skills are deteriorating. So keep that in mind. Now here's a very simple one. This is number 25. This is just a lacing. Again, here's my ends of my ends of my um, uh, sweatshirt ties that you can just put there, and they can just lace them, tie them, do what they want. Again, they were zigzagged down to the square and then covered with a piece of fabric, but they're not going to go anywhere. And then, of course, the high contrast, they can easily see these against the uh, lighter background. And to show you what I mean, this is just an example. This string is knotted here. It's knotted here, and then it's zigzagged onto the material. So this knot will prevent this from being pulled through. And then I cover it with another piece of material on top of it to make it pretty. OK, but we got to make sure that these things don't pull out or can be pulled off and ingested or thrown or lost but we just want to make a nice, secure way of, of keeping those together. So that's my method for that. 
Now this one seems to be real popular. This is fiddle number 26. <laughs> Marble maze. It encourages hand-eye coordination and finger strengthening because there's a little marble in here and they have to push it through the maze of the stitches to get it to go around. And this one is always fun. Now try to plan, plan your maze out first. Here's four popular designs. And depending on what size your, your marble is, or I've also used a, a bigger bead Make sure it glides smoothly in there. It doesn't have anything rough on it that would catch. But here's just some ideas. This is in our fiddle library of how you could do a maze. Little circle. I like the little heart. So there are four quick little ideas. You pick which one that you like. And then what I do is on the backing material, I'll stitch down like three sides, then push the marble in there. Don't forget your marble and then go ahead and stitch the other lines in there. So the fleece that I use for the front is very nice and smooth and soft on the hands. And I try to get some definition with some threads here. I probably should have used uh, a white thread, but I used red. So keep that in mind too. Uh, this would be a better square if this was something highly visible, like maybe a day glow orange or, or white. And you can go over it two or three times to make it more pronounced. But that's number 26, the marble maze. Now we're going to go to our sensory batch. And the first one is our fiddle number 27, sensory. We've got fabric yo-yos stitched down and secured by buttons sewn with unwaxed dental floss and heavy-duty thread. Now they're stitching here, 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 here. Each one of these are stitched on more than once. And this is a little Battenberg, little crochet that's got some nice feel to it. And just one simple big shiny button that you can just, it's just so nice and soothing just to smooth, swoosh around on that button. But whenever you have something that's hooked on by one point like this, I want you to put a anchor button underneath it. And these, you can just buy these by the, uh, they come in a whole bag, just to clear little anchor buttons. I'm not sure what they call them, but they are to make sure that this cannot be pulled off because somebody playing with this day after day after day, pulling, 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 there's a chance they could get that pulled off. But with that anchor button back there, that'll secure it down. So anytime you have something that is secured by only one point, put an anchor button underneath it. And that was number 27. Uh, secure your stitches, button and carpet thread, heavy duty thread, unwaxed dental floss. And uh, this also shows why I like a little bit heavier material for my fiddle squares, because it has more of a, a tighter weave and it holds the items on it a little bit better. Now we've got a popular one, number two, is sensory. Various pieces of trim you can sew down. Something about the soothing of a satin. That's just people just really like to rub that satin. So you don't have to put all of these on. This is just showing you some of the things that can be put down on a, uh, a, a square. We've got appliques with different feelings to them. And a word about tassels and pom-poms. If you look real close at a tassel or a pom-pom, you'll see that it's just kind of woven into the regular weave of the top of the trim. So if you take one and just really pull on it, you'd be able to pull and ravel all of this out. So when you're looking for your trim, see how it's made and see if there's some way that you can secure it down. Now this one, I zigzagged over this twice and then again at just to connection points to make sure that those will not be able to be pulled off. Okay, that was number two. And the companion to that sensory is number three. This is just a, a crochet doily that was sewn down or around. And again, that little washable satin bit in the middle. That's, you know, when they bind baby blankets, they bind it with that satin binding on the end, you know, and the kids will just sit and rub that for hours. 
Well, you understand because it's just so nice and silky and it's a good feel to it. And then the bow is nice and silky. Now, each one of these were sewn down in two places and everything is secured so it cannot be pulled off. But that's a real nice feel to it with the sensory. Now, we got a little peekaboo doors. This is a peekaboo. It's functional because somebody has to grab it and open it. And then when they do, they've got a little surprise inside. The texture of the applique is sensory. Now, I used craft bond interfacing to stiffen the door fabric. And you can also use fussy cut, maybe um, a character out of one of your fabrics and then applique around him in here. But something as a little surprise is always fun. And that was number nine. Now I like these, let me see. These are fiddles number tens. This is a crocheted twirlers in different lengths. This twirler is made with a double crochet. This is a half double crochet and that's a single crochet. And they're simple to do. You just chain a length and then work back the length, putting three stitches in every hole. So this has three stitches of double crochet in every hole, three stitches of half double, and three stitches of a single. And then they're different. These are made of the acrylics, so they feel different from this one who's made of the cotton. Now, I could have done this one better by making this more of a contrast, but keep that in mind too. Like we said, don't make it all the same because you won't be able to see it. So, twirlies, easy, fun. And now, my friend Dolores, she makes these for me. These are pig twirlies. I'm not sure how she makes them, but I'm sure you can look them up somewhere on the internet. They're like little twirlies that are meant for like hanging in, a, in, a, in a, a mobile. But I just took part of it and I zigzagged it down. I cut it to make it shorter. And then I just flopped these down and stitched them in three or four places to the material. So you can feel them and feel the softness to them and play with the curls. And then just a rudimentary zigzag of the stem and the flowers and a nice big old fat button in the middle that's just fun to run your finger around. Again, secure it with a back button. The more uh, sensory and functional, you'll see a lot of these too. These are just ribbons that are stitched down and they have different textures to them, different textures, different length. So the fingers can play inside of them or rub the outside of them and rub this, rub this, all texture, all sensory. And then this is the same idea, but with little fiddle faddles on the bottom. Now this one is not movable. It's on paracord. Paracord is zigzagged down with the top over it. And then they come to this one. Whoa, that one does something different. So I like to think of these as what is it teaching my mind to do? What is it challenging me to do? Do I pull it or do I not pull it? Do I roll it? Do I feel it? That's what the stimulation comes from and the soothing comes from. Now these little clothespins I think are fun and I've been trying them. They don't seem to hurt, but the thing about this is they're on a string. So if it gets to where it's going and the caretaker thinks that that's just too harmful, then they can just cut that off. But there's a good examples of those are number 11 of loops of ribbons and laces. And even this one is fiddle number 12, a ribbon grid. Put your fingers in and explore all the different textures. There's grain, there's satin, there's a twill, there's a little woven checkerboard. And these are just in a woven pattern stitched all the way around. And again, when it goes on the map, We'll probably put some kind of a ribbon binding around the outside just to give it a definition and to cover up our work. No shortage of ideas here, folks. You all got lots to pick from. Number 13, washable silk flowers were taken off the stem. They were stacked and then stitched down 
in a box pattern with an X. And then these little crocheted daisies were stitched around the outside and stitched here to fill in the space. So again, it's a sensory, you've got something to feel. And most of your artificials are washable, but read the labels on them. There's some that are not washable, but these are, these are washable. And they're just fun to play with, fun to feel. And that one is number 13. And you'll see a lot of this next one too. This is number 14, where we've got the little loopies to put your fingers through and to play. Can I get all of them in there? Well, just about. Then the ribbon here. And then, whoa, wait a minute. This one's elastic. Okay, so there's a difference in them. This is different from this, but yet they're still the same. What is this challenging my mind to do? Figuring out that one is different from the other. And if you're afraid that your lighter color is going to get washed out, put it on a piece of material that'll give it some contrast. So this is number 14. Grabbing and stretching the loops is functional and exercising the fingers and discovering that the two loops are not the same is a surprise. Now here are my little guys. This is, who are you? Number 15, something very simple, camouflage fabric was sewn down to mimic the tree bark, the top of the tree, the grass. You could even use fleece down here to make it fuzzy. And the little guys just have the schmooziest little bellies that you just want to rub and rub and rub. They just feel really good sitting on a tree. And then of course in the back, I ran out of my clear buttons, so I just raided my button box, but added the anchor buttons on the bottom. So that's number 15. 16, sensory. This is a good feeling. This is a, a washable silk that we just did rows of pin tucks in it. You just tuck the fabric and sew just maybe an eighth of an inch, and then just keep tucking and sewing. And this is what you have. It just is a nice sensory feeling to it. You can do the line straight, or you can do them curved. Folks with dementia often have changes to their visual cortex, so their peripheral vision is narrowed. So an easy way to help them focus is to incorporate well-defined feature squares and thicker borders. That's why you'll see all of these with a border, because it helps to find what the user is supposed to be doing and what they're supposed to be looking at. Now we've got number 18. Again, this would be something that I would label on my mat as being a hand wash, but these are silk ties. So again, that silky feeling just feels good. And they've got little funny little doors and then the tails are there that they can be flapped and then they can be rubbed. We have so many lovely things for the uh, women department that they can like all of the squares and with the flowers. We have to remember too, that there might be some older gentlemen that this might remind them of how they used to dress up when they were going to work or going to church or whatever they were doing. So we're trying to include something for those guys too. And that was number 18. And speaking of getting dressed up, this is the same theme. This is number 20. Sew down parts of hand worked or linens. This is an old hanky. It's clean, obviously. And then an applique was stitched on top of it. But just think about the possibility of maybe using part of a, a quilt, part of quilt squares, um, edges of the hankies. <clears throat> Excuse me. The applique is sewn down through all layers on the top of the hanky. And I just think if you had some old quilting, you could make a design or incorporate somewhere where they can feel the quilt. And it might remind them of what they used to dress as or what they do when they were younger. And of course, I gotta have my denim pockets, my denim pocket addict. This is number 21. It's functional and sensory. And it's got the denim pocket that I cleaned the outside, then stitched down with my top stitching gold and stitch down a couple of butterflies here. And then, well, wait, what's this? Oh, you got a little 
little flower there that we can explore and feel it. It's stitched down in all different directions so it won't come apart. And they can explore the flower and feel it. And then with their fingers, their mobility, they can push that back down in the pocket. So that's 21. And our last batch on the accessory are about all the same. They're just showing you that different types of material, they don't have to be any particular order. But here we've got polar fleece and some old scrap of washable suede. And then down at the bottom of it, I just cut the flaps. I could do a little fringy on the bottom. This is cut off of a coat, a Sherpa, and left a big ridge here so they can feel the ridge and then added some ribbon here in the middle with some another piece of uh, fleece material. Now this one, this is crochet yarn, knitting yarn, loopy yarn. And when I looked at it, the middle of it was just held together by a little thread and that wasn't going to cut it. So we added this piece of ribbon to cover that middle. And now this is really secure and these loops can be pulled on all day long. And I just think that just is a lot of fun because it's that chenille loop. And then this is just a piece of a washcloth. Okay, so your sensory doesn't have to be anything particular. Um, maybe you can make a sheep outline using Sherpa for the body or make a scene with clouds in the sky with from fleece or fur. But touch-based therapy is also known as sensory therapy. And it has the potential to harness that nervous energy, reduce anxiety, and offer comfort. Okay, our last category is auditory. Now, this is a hard one. Um, as many people as they age, they get hard of hearing. And if you did add anything that they might be able to hear, it could be so obnoxious that it bothers people around them. So auditory is going to be hard, but let's take a crack at it. Now, I think Lisa ought to know what this one is, huh? This is two pieces of a pipe fitting, plastic pipe fitting, that it not only exercises the fingers to screw these together, but if they can't get them screwed together, that's okay. We can clack them together. Now, with anything like this that you purchase, make sure that you take um, sandpaper or a file and go over all the mold markings on it to make sure there's nothing left that can cut the fingers. Uh, as we age, our skin becomes thinner and more sensitive, and sometimes the rough textures can damage hands. And then this was just put on with chain stitched of three different lengths of cotton. And that is number 22. It covers all the categories. It's functional, it's sensory, and it's auditory. But there again, it's a good example of think about where your things are going uh, before you make it. Um, this might be a borderline of not washable for some institutions like a nursing home, or it might be considered too large with somebody who is suffering maybe with um, some judgment issues that they could just take this and hit somebody with it. So just be very careful where you use this in what setting that you use it for. Okay, we've got sensory and auditory. These little pop-it guys, I tell you, these things are fun. These are the little plastic that you pop the bubbles out and then they pop back and they make a little bit of a sound. They're not a real big sound, but they make a little bit of a sound, but it's a nice feel thing that you can just sit and fiddle and pop those out. Again, this was stitched down securely underneath here and covered with a uh, patterned fabric. Okay, number 29, the ladies will remember. I remember when I used to cook and they can play with these. These are little measuring uh, spoons from the Dollar Tree. And I did not use the big tablespoon on here because it was getting too big. So I just used the three smaller ones. But they do make a sound. I put it on a little bit of an elastic cord. This is one of those headbands. And they just feel good. They make a sound. They're fun to play with. So that's number 29. 
And you'll see a lot of these things on strings. Two empty thread bobbins. I don't know, does anybody have any empty thread bobbins around? Well, we all do. They can be clacked together. They can be spun around and they just feel nice and smooth. And the same thing with the rings, the rings on the strings. Now, if you're gonna make one of these and wanna make it longer, don't go too overboard with this because if this is gonna be in a laundered situation, when those cords get really long, they can get knotted up and messed up. So it's okay if you wanna make them, just don't go overboard with the length. Now, kind of like this, this one's the auditory. This one is pony beads and jingle bells in a cotton sack. If you use netting, and I don't recommend a netting sack, I've seen netting sacks, I'm afraid that people can push and poke it and push their fingers through the netting. So if you've got anything like that, make sure you give it a good test at home to make sure that you can't get through it with your fingers. You are your last line of quality control. So remember that before you send it out, you gotta test it. So don't use dried beans or peas or anything in it because those aren't washable. This has got pony beads and jingle bells. This is sewn down and left open at the bottom with a little grab handle. And then these are just pony beads on t-shirt yarn to manipulate and slide along, slide along the cord. And now my last one is kind of a, this is still a work in progress, but I'll show it to you. Maybe somebody can come up with a better idea than what I had. This is number 30, it's the auditory fiddle. And what it was meant to do was it's supposed to make a crunching sound. And it kind of does make a little squeaky sound, but it's not real loud. I didn't want to use regular cellophane or plastic bags or chip bags, because I didn't think they would hold up in the washer and dryer. So I used cooking bags and cut up pieces of cooking bags and crunched them inside of the ears. Uh, cooking bags are ready to go in the oven and hold in liquid. So they should stand up to washing and drying, but they're just kind of fun to squeeze anyway. So if somebody can think of something better to use for an auditory, we'll just call this the, uh, this will just be a sensory for right now. Little guys with his ears. Okay, now, whew. Let's go over some construction. Um, I'm going to stay here, but I've got to clear things up a little bit. Now, everybody's your minds are about blown about now because you're thinking of all the different things that you can make. <laughs> it's really hard. Uh, the first time that I did one, I wasn't real happy with it. And the more you do, the more that you'll know. Now, you can use just about any material for the mat. And I put them into three different categories. All right, let me get maybe a little bit higher here. Okay. And I put the material into the three different categories. Um, first is your lighter weight cotton and cotton blends. This would be just a nice neutral background or the green and the dot is kind of a nice neutral. Something that's not really crazy. Just keep it a little bit, a little bit muted. But if you're going to use these cottons, and these are what we call our quilting weight cottons, then what I would recommend is that you uh, iron this craft bond on the back of the top of the mat. And this is, uh, 809 Pelon 809 decor bond, 45 inches wide, is 649 at a yard at Joann's, but wait for their 40 or 50% coupon. And this craft bond gives it a nice stiff backing. And so I would use this if you're going to use this weight of material. And then I would also add one layer of, this is TP970 Thermalam Plus. It's just a lighter weight fleece and it gives it more body and it gives it more oomph for sewing things on. So you can use this or a lightweight uh, compressed quilt batting 
or even a layer of fleece, uh, maybe a polar fleece. But the combination of the lightweight material with the deco bond ironed onto the back, then the layer of this will make the top of the mat nice and sturdy. And then for the back of the mat, we're going to use fleece. Not fleece, I'm sorry, flannel. The back of the mats use flannel so they don't slide off the person's lap. Okay, so if you're using this lighter weight material, you're going to have one layer of the uh, quilting cotton, then you're going to fuse this onto the back of it, the decor bond or craft bond, and then you're going to put a layer of the thermal lamb. And with those three layers, then you're going to put your other blocks and do your other doodaddies on top of it. And then when you're all done, you're going to put the flannel on it. That way the flannel can cover up all of the things that you've done inside of it. So that's your first option for materials if you want to use your lighter weight cottons. The next option is what I'm going to call medium weights. And this is a, a washable home deck material. It's also got some texture to it and it's very neutral. So all your colors will just really pop out off of here. Here's another piece of a just a medium weight decorator material. Same thing, kind of a neutral. And so you could put your vivid colors on it. And even here's a little piece of corduroy that gives it some more of a texture to it. So these are what I'm calling medium weight materials. And if you're using these medium weight materials, then you don't have to put any decor bond on the back of it, but I still would use one layer of the fleece. Now, don't worry if you're not catching all this because all of this is covered in our project overview sheet. So you can go back and refresh yourself when you read that. Um, the last, last one category that I call is a heavy duty is I used a pair of denim jeans for my first one of my first mats. And this is just a pair of man's jeans. And I cut it off as high as I could go up here and then opened it up and used that for the mat. So here's the denim jeans opened up flat. Here is the side seam as I used as part of my definition for the uh, part of my definition for the mat and then put my features on top of it. And then all I did was just sew then the backing on it. Now, make sure you got a large pair of jeans. Uh, go to the big men's store, <laughs> big and husky men's department in the in the thrift store to find those. And it works really well. Um, so the construction is if you are using features that are on these squares, then all you need to do is get creative, get your squares going, and then when you go to lay them out, put them in a pleasing order. Let me get that out of the way. Put them around in a pleasing order. Not every feature has to be on a square. If you want to, uh, this has got two of them on squares, this and the bottom marble maze are on squares but the other ones i just put directly on the denim like the elastic pull and then here's another snappy and then the zipper the zipper with the big pull that was just stitched directly onto the mat and the ends are covered up velcro pull so you don't have to put everything on a square. Sometimes it's just easier to construct it like that. But these are sewn just straight right onto the top material. Here's another hide and seek, little patriotic flag tucked down inside. So once you've got your features sewn to the top and any interfacing that you might have to use if you're using the lighter weight ones, all you're going to do is just put the flannel 
on top of here, your backing, put them right sides together and stitch them together. Leave yourself about a six inch opening at the bottom or the side because it's going to take a lot to get this turned. So then stitch the right sides together, clip the corners, turn it right side out, then tuck in the uh, seam where you left it for uh, turning, and then top stitch. And then to finish this, I just like to give it some more definition that's a subtle definition. I just top stitch down this center, then top stitch here and here. So each of mine looks like it's got a station. Word of caution, when you are laying out your squares on your top, try to make sure that you have them in far enough from the edge. Can you see what I did here? I didn't have that far enough away from the edge. So when I sewed it, it sewed into the thing. Nobody's going to know it, but you all do now because I just told you. But just make sure that you've got enough room. Put these squares in about an inch and a half or so before you sew the backing to it. And then it gives you room and you're not sweating it like this. So flannel on the back. It keeps it in place, keeps it doesn't. Does it slide or move off of somebody's lap? Oh boy, let me see where I'm at. I've been talking too much, right? Oh, so as you can see, you don't have to break the bank by going out and buying everything. You can use whatever you have at home or is in your old catch-all. When I get making these, I've got like boxes and boxes laying out one's all ribbons one's all trims one's all buckles and whatnot so you can get creative and just make things from what you have but if you do want to go out and do a little shopping i find that the dollar tree had a lot of interesting items but just remember your guidelines um is it washable is it sturdy will it fall apart with repeated use does it contain anything excessive metal we don't want metal. Is it too large? Will it cause harm if it's thrown at somebody? So if you're unsure, just email me or Facebook message me to check before you buy or before you create a square. I hate for you to put your time and effort into something that can't be used. Please follow our Fiddle Square Library. The Fiddle Square Library is linked off of the project page. So you go to the project overview sheet and there'll be a link right there for the fiddle library. If you have a good idea for a square that's not shown in the library, contact me first before you make it. I welcome good ideas, and it'd be fun to add some more to our, our library, but I would like to look at them first, and I know you can all appreciate that. Oh, one last thing before I lose my voice. When you're doing these squares, add a few prairie points when you sew them down, or maybe some finger pulls. There's all kinds of ideas, and I know you guys are going to be having fun making this, and I appreciate your efforts so much, and thank you for your time tonight. I'm sorry I went so long, but I think I covered everything, so we're going to wrap it up real quick here and then take some questions. Thank you, guys. I start talking and I'm muted. Uh, thanks, Kathy. That was amazing. I'm so excited to start seeing everybody's creativities and what they pick out of the uh, library and start putting together. And uh, I think it's going to be a great project. So uh, I want to thank everybody. And I want to especially thank Kathy for all the hard work in putting uh, the Fiddle Mat project together and on. Uh, right now, Bristol Hospice is our partner charity requesting the fiddle mats and on the Bristol Hospice page of our website, if you scroll uh, down to the pattern section, there's a button that says um, twiddle muffs and fiddle mats. If you click that button, it'll take you down to that section of the website and it has the project overview sheet and a link also to the, um, the, um, the square collection. So there's two buttons on there. So you can go to the square. If you already are familiar with the overview sheet, you need to read the whole entire sheet first. And if you're just looking for the library, there's a button on there directly. So um, thanks a lot, Kathy. I appreciate it. Um, and I'm going to stop the recording now and then we'll just go to take some questions and, and talk about it.